All right. We got one, two, and three out of the way. We got Virginia Company out of the way, tobacco cultivation, power ten, how all those uh, concern the development of Virginia. Now we're on number four, the House of Burgesses. Notice that the House of Burgesses, the theme over here is government, colonial government. So what is the House of Burgesses and how did it how did it play into Virginia's development? Yeah, and that's that's what the focus uh, we have now on the House of Burgesses. All right. So the House of Burgesses was established in Virginia, and we usually call it the Virginia House of Burgesses, in 1619. What is the House of Burgesses? It's basically a legislature. And what does a legislature do? It makes the law. You know, if we look at our national government, Congress, the United States Congress is our. Uh, legislature for the United States government. If we go to Atlanta here in Georgia, if we go to Atlanta, our state capital, we notice that the Georgia General Assembly is our state legislature. Well, uh, one of the first types of a representative legislature, a representative democracy, uh, where there's elected representatives to help govern, and in this case a colony, is the Virginia House of Burgesses. It's the first example of a representative democracy within the colonies, within the American colonies. And we look at Jamestown, and that's one of the things you need to know for the OCT is an example of the first uh, representative democracy in the colonies. And in order for us to truly understand this, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to compare and contrast. And compare and contrast uh, is a skill that is vitally necessary to pass in the OCT and you're going to have to do this okay so we're going to jump ahead to uh, B and we're going to look at the government component under substandard B in New England the town hall meetings the town hall meetings are also is the town hall meetings is also a form of legislature in the New England colonies however to contrast it it's quite different um, Town hall meetings in New England are an example of direct democracy. Notice the word direct democracy. There, there are no representatives. And in New England, uh, here in a church or school or whatever building they had available locally, all the citizens will come and sit in and determine what laws would be making for that particular colony or that particular settlement and they would make it directly so every law that was made every one of the citizens got an equal vote um, Thomas Jefferson is quoted a lot talking about town hall meetings uh, New England town hall meetings and one of the things he says is the best school of political liberty the world ever saw was the New England town meeting now that that quote is attributed to Thomas Jefferson a lot of sources uh, the other one is the wisest invention ever devised by the wit of man for the perfect exercise of self-government and for its preservation is the New England town meeting. Thomas Jefferson pretty much paraphrasing here said a pro that New England town meetings were a promising uh, step toward genuine self-government. And what is the difference in that in the House of Burgesses? Is the House of Burgesses we don't each citizen does not get a vote. Where they pretty much elect going to the polls and casting their vote a representative that will speak on their behalf. So if we look at the House of Burgesses and we contrast it with this town hall meetings, we see that there are two different types of legislature or type forms of government we have in the colonies. House of Burgesses being the first representative example of a representative democracy and then its contrast or uh, other example first direct democracy town hall meetings in New England. What's the theme here? The theme is social and political interactions. In other words, colonial governments uh, and democracy. Both are forms of democracy. The House of Burgess, House of Burgesses in, in, in Virginia, in Jamestown, happens to be a representative democracy. The town hall meetings in New England happens to be a form of direct democracy. So if we were to put them in a chart like this, we'd see that uh, down here there are both legislatures or lawmaking bodies. That's the similarity they both have. But 
you know, their names are different. The House of Burgess is in Virginia, New England, town hall meetings. The difference or the contrasting elements is that Virginia is, an, is, is run by elected representatives. Whereas New England is based on civic participation. Every citizen gets one vote. Now, this is an example of direct democracy, where the people themselves directly make the law. They participate directly in New England. Well, in Virginia, the example is that it's the first example of the people not directly voting on bills, but electing representatives who would then vote on bills on their behalf as part of the legislature. And this is a different way of looking at it here uh, to contrast the two uh, New England civic participation direct democracy. But what we're learning here is about Virginia House of Burgesses. And they use elective representatives, which is a form of representative democracy. Now, how do we put this in real world terms? You know, uh, if we look at today in Georgia, in our district here, uh, District 2, because I'm in southwest Georgia is that we see if we had a direct democracy then everyone all the people within my region within the state of Georgia would each and every one of us vote on every bill and with population across the United States you know if we have 300 if we have 300 million people in the United States that's kind of difficult a direct democracy probably would not work with that much population okay so what we have here in my district in the United States Congress with Saxby Chambliss and Johnny Isaacson in the Senate, here's Saxby Chambliss here, and uh, Sanford Bishop in the House of Representatives, they represent my particular district, the people within my district, where they're constituents. So we will go to the polls and vote for these guys. Then these guys would go to Washington, D.C., and then they will vote on all the laws. So this is a representative democracy. Okay. If we use the different example of representative democracy, let's say your high school principal says, okay, for each department or each wing or each grade level, uh, we want you to elect one person to represent your particular grade level. Usually this is a student government. If you voted for one person to represent your entire ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, 12th grade class. If you chose one person to go vote in school laws or participate in government within the school for your class, then that would be a representative democracy. They would go and then vote for things school-wide for, on your behalf. However, if the entire ninth grade class, 10th grade, 11th, 12th, every one of those students vote on every issue to come about within the school setting then that would be a direct democracy so let's return back to the house of burgesses our original understanding is that the house of burgesses established in 1619 is uh, an example of the first representative democracy within the colonies in other words in jamestown virginia and throughout virginia colony the way we're going to be represented within the legislature there is that the citizens would go to the to the polls and they would vote and cast their vote for their representatives. Then their representatives would go to the House of Burgesses, which was the body or legislature, and vote on their behalf. And so we meet our other element uh, for House of Burgesses and how it plays into the development of Virginia in government.